Howdy everybody. I'm headed out to what I like to call the Enchanted Forest. Now the Enchanted Forest starts right next to the house here. This is all Nepiera grass planted and also with Tithonia rotondifolio. This is the large Tithonia that grows like a big bush or almost like a tree. And then Madero Negro, Pudicidia sepium trees. And it goes all along here. And here is more of the Enchanted Forest. This is where it really gets thick. This is the variety of Nepier called Cameroon grass that has the red tint to it. Some of this grass is four meters tall. You can see it's putting heads. It doesn't grow well from seed. It reproduces better with stolons. And now we're in to another <laughs> variety of Nepier grass called Mar Alfalfa. And there's still a little bit of Cameroon in here with the Mar Alfalfa. <laughs> and then finally, we get in here to the real crux of the Enchanted Forest with the Cuba grass, which is another variety of Napier grass. And as I've said in another video, everybody has their own name for this stuff. These are different varieties of the same thing. Let's just go through a tunnel here of our trees and grass. Look at this, all of these wildflowers uh, growing in here in the enchanted forest as well. And as you can see, the Cuba grass also grows very tall. about four meters and it's it shot out ahead now the enchanted forest here really emphasizes the benefits of chop and drop and the newer crop of homesteaders they consider chop and drop to be kind of permaculture old school like i said in a previous video swales were also considered old school you know maybe you guys used to do that but we don't do it anymore there's other things that are better we can buy a wood chipper we can get tree cutting businesses to dump their wood chips with us we don't have to chop and drop ourselves we can do it a better way and all of that's fine but I wanted to emphasize the benefits of chop and drop. So chop and drop kind of goes right along with another technique used in permaculture called pollarding. And so here we have a tree. This is a Glutecidia sepium. It was recently, about six to eight weeks ago, was pollarded and is now growing back. Remember, we want to get more lateral growth and stop the vertical growth. Now you're always going to have vertical growth, so that's why we chop and drop. Here's another recently pollarded, I guess this is about two months old, another over here. Whenever I pollard, which I do a couple times a year typically, what we want to do is take the material that we're taking in the pollard and we just throw it on the ground. That's chop and drop. Here's another Pericidia sepium tree, recently pollarded about two weeks ago. And you can see that one is growing back. Here's another one about two weeks old, growing back. Here's a citrus right next to it. It must have been planted by an animal because I wouldn't have planted a citrus here. But more pollarded trees. And you can see all over the, all over the ground here is evidence of chop and drop. Here's the, the twigs and the, the things that we chopped and just dropped. And then I was just here earlier today, chopping and dropping again. Here's the tree that I pollarded. Here's another one, another one. I didn't have the saw with me, so these branches are too big for me to cut with the clippers, so I have to come back. But these are all things that I did today. And you can see the chop and drop all over the place here. Now these leaves will die and they're going to provide nitrogen in the soil. The wood is going to decompose gradually and that will provide carbon. The leaves will provide carbon too, but you obviously get a lot more carbon from the wood. It will decompose with fungi fairly quickly and we have another decomposer here, termites, that will eat the wood also. Here's a fungus growing on one of the pieces that we chopped and dropped. And you can see that all through here. Now this is a slower process. So it's not like getting uh, a truckload of wood chips. 
However, when you get a truckload of wood chips, most of the time you don't know where those chips even came from. And you don't know what kind of pesticide or other things might be associated with those wood chips when you bring them into your property. When you chop and drop, you know what is decomposing and you know that it's the good stuff. It's not necessarily contaminated in any way. We have a few years of chopping and dropping here and that has really had a huge effect on this piece of land. When we first bought it, this piece of land was all rocky. Basically nothing was growing here, hardly at all. It was just ground. And now look at it. We have an enchanted forest. And I like to call it the enchanted forest because I kind of feel enchanted walking through these really tall grass, this African grass, which we use to feed the sheep in the summer. People are running around trying to buy hay bales and hay is a lot more expensive these days. We don't buy any hay at all. And one of the reasons why is because we planted this Napier grass and we have a few trees that we can use as fodder as well. But Napier grass is a C4 grass, which means that it has a special pathway for photosynthesis. Your annual grasses and annual plants that you eat are typically C3 and that's a different type of photosynthesis. The C4 actually doesn't use up as much water. That's what makes them so drought tolerant. And so we're able to simply cut the Napier grass and get a little bit of it to the sheep every day and they're very happy with it. At the same time, in the enchanted forest here, we have Viricidia sepium trees planted, which are pumping nitrogen into the soil because we're pollarding the trees. So pollarding the trees always pumps nitrogen in the soil. And then the advantage of chop and drop is that you're adding carbon and initially nitrogen. Chop and drop is an extremely useful mechanism and I'm a little bewildered as to why people don't use more of it. You can chop and drop Gudicidia sepium, and Gudicidia is not the only one you can do it on. You can do it with Lucana, you can do it with a bunch of other species of trees, particularly the tropical trees, and they'll keep growing back. And so you're constantly producing biomass, but you're producing biomass, what they call in situ, a nice Latin phrase, which means you're producing it right there. You're not bringing it in, it's right there. And you're putting the biomass into the soil, Improving the soil, we're at the beginning of the dry season, so things are kind of gradually dying off, and this whole area is opening up a little bit more than usually is in the, the wet season. Uh, sometimes it's even difficult to walk through here. It's so dense. And remember what I said 10 years ago, this was just rocks and dirt. I didn't have the foresight to take pictures because I didn't think anybody would be interested in seeing rocks and dirt. <laughs> But, but apparent, apparently that was not a good thing on my part. So it never even occurred to me to take pictures of, of the farm when we first got it. I was actually kind of ashamed of it. So uh, why would I take a picture of something that I'm ashamed of? But I see that the value of being able to show before and after would have been a very good stark contrast. So you can blame me for that. So I just wanted to emphasize that chop and drop is a legitimate permaculture technique, one that works really well in conjunction with some other permaculture techniques to produce very, very good soil. With that, I'm going to end the video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.